Do you know that if a website is poorly maintained and crashes while you're scanning it with tools like Nmap, the police will likely find you and throw you in jail, especially if they found Kali Linux or any other hacking tools installed on your computer. That's why in this video, I'll walk you through the process of setting up a web server on your PC, that you can use to test your hacking skills on, and educate yourself by experimenting within a virtual environment rather than performing real-world attacks, so let's get started. Hacking Fundamentals, Setting Up a Virtual Lab Okay so when building a virtual environment on your computer, the first thing you'll need is a software called VirtualBox to set up the environment itself, and install virtual machines on it. For this, you can head over to its official website, and download it according to your main operating system like this. Next, you'll also need a platform for your hacking machine, and while there are a bunch of options to choose from, I would recommend installing Kali Linux, as it's used in almost all hacking tutorials on YouTube. To download it, you can head over to its official website, click on Virtual Machines, and then select your computer's architecture to download it for VirtualBox. Finally, you'll also need a website server to hack, and for this, you can head over to a website called Vulnerable Hub, to choose from a bunch of options for free. I'm gonna download this one as it's beginner friendly and inspired by my favorite TV show Mr. Robot. Once everything is downloaded, open VirtualBox and install it. Next, right click on the downloaded Kali Linux file and extract it. Once done, open VirtualBox and click on this green button, to add the extracted Kali Linux file to your hacking environment like this. Now add the web server as well, and click on finish. And there you go, our hacking environment has been successfully set up, and we can now run both of these machines to start hacking, or click on settings to modify details like their names or hardware properties if we want. However there's a slight problem. You see while our hacking environment is ready, it's still not very practical, as running a vulnerable server on our home network could potentially leave it open to several attacks, and a hacker can use these vulnerabilities to compromise our home network. That's why what we need to do now is create an internal network on our PC, which will be isolated from our home network, and then connect these two virtual machines to it, so that when we run them, they are connected to an isolated network rather than being connected to our home network. So to create an isolated network on your computer, first select your hacking machine from this left menu, and go to Network Settings. Then choose Internal Network from the drop-down menu, and give your network a name like this. Next, repeat the same steps for your vulnerable server, and use the same network name you assigned to your hacking machine. Now if you've watched my video on networking basics for hackers, you'll know that while we've given a name to our network, it is still missing one crucial thing to work, and that one crucial thing is called a DHCP server. A DHCP server is a network protocol that provides things like IP addresses and gateways to all the devices in a network, and in order to provide our network this protocol, we need to open a command prompt on our computer, and navigate to the directory where we initially installed virtual box. Next, we'll use a tool called VBox Managed by VirtualBox, to create a DHCP server for our network, and then specify the network's name we set for our machines like this. Now we'll also need to specify a router or an IP address for our isolated network, and if you're not sure about what that means, you can either copy exactly what I'm doing, or watch my video on networking basics to get your concepts clear. Then we'll assign the range of IP addresses we want to give to all the devices in our isolated network, and finally, we'll specify our network mask, followed by enable like this, to activate our network. Now to confirm that our internal network has been set up and isolated from our home network, we can power up our Kali Linux machine, enter Kali as both the username and password, open up a terminal, and then type IP address to check whether the IP address of our machine falls between the range we specified earlier or not. And as you can see the IP address is indeed in between the range, meaning that our network was successfully set up and our machine is connected to it. Now in order to confirm that this network is isolated, we can ping it from our home network using command prompt like this, and verify whether it establishes any contact or not. And as you can see it shows no response, meaning that we are good to go and start hacking the web server by turning it on. Okay so this particular server is actually designed in a way that we don't know the username and password to log in into it, and have to hack our way in, so let's try to do that right now. Now when it comes to hacking web servers, the first thing a hacker needs is the server's IP address or domain name to perform vulnerability scans on it, and in order to find the IP address of this server, we'll need to scan for all the devices connected to our internal network using Nmap, and look for the web server among the listed devices. If you don't know what Nmap is or how it is used, you can go ahead and watch this video, but nonetheless, we'll start with sudo space Nmap, then specify a dash ss switch to perform a stealthy scan, and finally put in the range of IP addresses that we want to search for. And as you can see, it has indeed shown all the devices connected to our internal network. Now in order to identify which one is the web server among them, we can simply look at the open ports of these devices, and see which one has ports 80 or 443 open, as they are the ones that are commonly used for handling web traffic. So this one seems to be the server, and if we copy its IP address to paste it into our browser, we can see that it has redirected us to this Mr. Robot themed web page, that we can use to get some clues on how to hack the machine. Now while this is something called a capture the flag situation, where we are basically challenged by the creator of this vulnerable server to look for a number of keys that are hidden somewhere within the file system of this server, I'm gonna end the video here and encourage you to try and capture them yourself, as it will enhance your problem solving skills and push you to become a better hacker. If you're someone who's new to all of this and don't know where to start, go and watch a walkthrough of someone attempting to hack this server to gain a basic understanding, and then download another machine from Vulnerable Hub to practice what you learned without watching a walkthrough. If you have any questions, make sure to ask them in the comments section down below, and I will see you in the next one.